thanks for inviting me today. So I'm an enthusiastic supporter of sustainable society themes. Um, and it's great to be here today to talk about research agendas related to that theme. You've heard a lot of science. I'm guessing I'm taking a slightly different approach today. Um, I want to talk about measuring and managing corporate sustainability. So I'm in the Faculty of Economics and Business and actually spend a lot of time thinking, writing, researching about the relationship between business and society. So bringing it back to the society theme. Um, and um, for the purpose of today, and I know that there can be lots of discussions about this, the particular terms that I use, um, but I want to de define corporate sustainability broadly as the way that corporations manage uh, environmental, social, and governance issues. So not just environmental issues, also social issues and broader uh, governance issues. So I want to take the next um, 20, 15, 20 minutes or so to uh, discuss three broad questions. First, how can we measure corporate sustainability? So how do we see a sustainable corporation? Uh, or how do we recognize it when we see one? Is there even such a thing? Some of you might think. Um, and second, if we can measure corporate sustainability, can we use that measuring process to try and improve sustainability impacts. This is where a lot of my research focuses. Because we know companies um, have heard some of this science, have been investing in uh, corporate social responsibility activities, ethical uh, business conduct, environmental management for some decades now. But we also know that progress has not been nearly enough, that we need to change and that we need to change radically and quickly. So the third question is, is this enough? Is our current system of measuring and managing uh, enough to achieve meaningful change? And I wanted to put some context to these questions and why we should care about them um, by starting with something that directly uh, affects most of you in this room at home, uh, and that's your pension. So more precisely, the way your pension funds uh, invest your pension contributions in corporate shares. So you may be doing your bid. I think we're all trying to do that. We might bike to work. We may have solar panels on our roof. You may even own an electric car. But what is your pension fund uh, invested in? OK, so if you work for the RUG or another education institution, your pension fund is called ABP. And so they have a very informative video on their website. So let's have a look at what they do. I hope this is going to work. In 2020 wil ABP alleen nog maar beleggen in bedrijven die voldoende aandacht hebben voor duurzaam en verantwoord werken en een goed pensioen opleveren. Hoe bereiken we dat? Door bij elke belegging een bewuste keuze te maken. Daarom beoordelen we eerst alle bedrijven waarin we kunnen beleggen. In totaal zijn dat er zo'n 9.500. Bij die beoordeling kijken we eerst of er redenen zijn om helemaal niet in een bedrijf te beleggen. Bijvoorbeeld omdat het producten maakt waar we niet achter staan. Zoals clusterbommen, kernwapens of tabak. Of omdat het zich niet houdt aan internationale regels. Bijvoorbeeld rondom mensenrechten of milieuvervuiling. Dit soort bedrijven valt voor ons al meteen af. De bedrijven die overblijven, leggen we onder de loep. Daarbij kijken we naar rendement, risico en kosten. Maar we letten ook scherp op hoe duurzaam en verantwoord deze bedrijven zijn. Dit doen we door te checken of ze afspraken hebben op dit gebied en of ze die ook nakomen. Voor elke bedrijfstak hebben we aparte criteria. Voldoet een bedrijf hieraan, dan noemen we dat een koploper. In deze koplopers beleggen we graag. Maar daarnaast zijn er ook bedrijven die nog achterblijven in duurzaamheid en in verantwoord werken. ABP wil alleen beleggen in bedrijven waarvan we verwachten dat we ze kunnen aanzetten tot verbetering. We noemen die de belofte. We gaan met deze bedrijven in gesprek om duidelijk te maken wat we verbeterd willen zien. Soms is dit gesprek intensief. 
We oefenen dan langere tijd druk uit op het bedrijf en blijven controleren op de voortgang. Als er binnen enkele jaren geen resultaten zijn, stopt ABP met beleggen in dit bedrijf. Lukt het ons wel om een bedrijf duurzamer en meer verantwoord te laten werken, dan is ons doel bereikt. En is de wereld weer een klein beetje mooier geworden. ABP maakt dus bewuste keuzes voor de koplopers en beloften. Zo beleggen wij duurzaam en verantwoord. En just to stress that this is no longer the realm of ethical investors as they used to be called. So niche elements of the markets. This is a major pension fund in the Netherlands. There's others in the Netherlands and worldwide that uh, have these policies. Um, you'll notice that they call this responsible or sustainable investment. They still don't like to be associated with ethics or morality. Uh, and obviously risk and return. We had some, some discussions already about this. Is this enough cost-benefit analysis? This is obviously still very much grounded in this type of analysis. But it's definitely a mainstream uh, approach, becoming a mainstream approach to investment. And so these investors that practice this responsible or sustainable investment clearly need to measure the sustainability of the corporations that they invest in. You saw the checklist in the video. So what's on that list? What type of criteria are on that list? Um, in other words, how can you measure corporate sustainability? And so here is often where the so-called rating agencies come in. Uh, they've been around for two, three, sometimes even longer decades. Um, and there used to be a lot of them. Almost every country had its own uh, rating agency. And they've consolidated and merged together to become uh, a limited set of players. And what these commercial rating agencies do is take information about corporate practices from uh, a company's own reports, from, uh, they sometimes send uh, companies questionnaires, and also secondary sources, including media reports. And then they rate how sustainable a company is. So they would assign points to a company, uh, to their environmental management policy, to their working conditions, integration of labor standards throughout the supply chain, and their governance structures. And then they take, usually have specific criteria for each industry, so recognizing that different industries have different impacts and sustainability problems. You can kind of view them as an industry uh, themselves, so the rating agencies, they're fairly unregulated, unstandardized, and attracting a lot of attention. So as responsible or sustainable investment popularity increases, more funds try to take this approach. They need this type of data, um, and they find that they might be comparing apples with oranges. Um, and there's been quite a lot of inflow into these funds, ESG funds, as they call them, uh, also under uh, kind of pressure from EU regulators to, uh, to increase private investment geared towards meeting the Paris Agreement targets. And so these rating agencies are becoming more controversial. And the criticism really revolves around uh, two main sources. One is around their methodology. So what kind of criteria do they use? And who decides on those criteria? Who decides what is sustainable? Um, the correlation between some of the main ratings that are being used is only about 30%. So that means if you compare it to credit rating agencies, for example, which are standardized uh, and regulated, there the correlation is 99%, right? So it means that all these rating agencies measure corporate sustainability differently, um, which also ends up with companies sometimes being highly rated as being very sustainable and for another rating as being uh, very poor. And the other criticism is about the data that's being used. So there are problems with the underlying data, uh, which is often self-reported and not audited to the same standard as financial data. And so this sometimes leads to accusations of greenwashing or 
the criticism that nothing really meaningful is actually measured here. And both criticisms are related to the process of commensuration. So the process of taking a lot, sometimes qualitative and quantitative data, and turning that into one single number or a metric. And that metric can then be used to compare across corporations in an industry, for example. And this is exactly what corporate managers like about the ratings. Um, they, uh, it gives them a number to, to say, yes, we are good in corporate sustainability because we have been rated uh, or we are included in the FTSE for good. So if you read their reports, you often see the logos of the rating agencies and their achievements in terms of ratings in these reports. The um, Dow Jones Sustainability Index, which is kind of, it only includes top rated companies. Uh, I've been known, or I've heard that described as, um, by a corporate manager, as uh, winning the Oscar of sustainability. So at, on the one hand, they like it. Um, and this is obviously, to a large degree, symbolic. Um, but it also means that uh, uh, this rating process of measuring corporate sustainability and having a public uh, rating can have organizational consequences. So in universities, we're not unfamiliar with being rated ourselves. Uh, I'm sure many of you sat in meetings where the latest outcomes of the Keuzegid, the university guide, have been discussed and how your course was doing, or international ratings, for example, those by Times Higher Education. We know what it feels like being rated. Um, and that the commensuration that those ratings do can make us feel uncomfortable and question the methodology or the data. But they always tend to um, create reactions. And social scientists call this reactivity. So applied to these ratings, it's the process that corporations go through to adjust their organizational practices in order to obtain a better rating. Uh, a better rating than their competitors, or a better rating from last year or the, the quarter before. Um, and this commensuration process can be very powerful, particularly in fields where there's a limited set or only one set of ratings, um, because the power of commensuration is that it focuses attention. So I put Peter Drucker, uh, on the slide, uh, he's been attributed the quote, what gets measured gets managed, although some contest that he actually coined the phrase. Uh, but it focuses attention. And so coming back to question two, which was, can the measurement process, although flawed, be used to improve corporate sustainability? Um, in my research, it shows that at the very least, uh, it can help companies become more transparent about their emissions, about their activities, um, in terms of labor standards, and other issues that are rated by these ratings. Um, and the firms that ABP in the video would call the, the promising firms, so the firms that haven't quite got the top rating, also use some of these measurement criteria as goals to work towards. Um, knowing that increased investment from pension funds, but also public pressure, uh, could be the investment could be the reward uh, for their work. And so there are also initiatives that have um, recognized what I used is regulatory power, this power to change corporate behavior by measuring. Um, and they harness this, this public pressure that ensues, as well as the competitive pressure between corporations to really uh, push more sustainable activities from corporations. So the World Benchmarking Alliance, for example, they rate key industries and key firms uh, on their approach and impact to the sustainable development goals, for example. And they do this publicly, all the data is publicly available, and they do, they, uh, uh, create their measurement criteria in consultation with, with stakeholders. So they really try to use the measurement process to incentivize change from within the system.
So we do not have a single but many measures of a different aspects of corporate sustainability. And this irritates company management. So they like the ratings, but they also increasingly grumble about them. So we were doing a piece of research on uh, another topic altogether where we were talking to corporate managers and unsolicited, they all brought up these ratings. There's too many. Uh, we spend too much time uh, answering questions from rating agencies rather than actually uh, doing the work that we should be doing. Um, and so that might irritate them, but it can also lead to a meaningful conversation about what does it actually mean for your corporation uh, to be sustainable. And um, many investors, just like ABP in the movie, uh, are not just measuring, but also engaging in dialogue with the management of the corporations they invest in. Um, and that's not just ABP, that's again many investors around the world. Um, actually, I heard the term stewardship, earth stewardship uh, being dropped earlier. Investors call that stewardship. So actually talking to uh, the corporations, the management of the corporations they invest in about sustainability. Um, often this is because they want to identify the risks associated with climate change and other uh, societal challenges. Um, and there is from the corporate side, which is often the side that I, as a management scholar, uh, look at, there is a recognition. So some corporate managers think, oh, an investor talking about sustainability. OK, we weren't expecting that. We'll give them all our reports or our CSR measures or our sustainability uh, activities and hope they go away. But others recognize that these are investors, um, analysts, that speak to a lot of companies, including their competitors. And they might have you know, some useful knowledge about what's going on in the industry, how corporations deal with these issues. And so um, they enter a constructive dialogue about what corporations could do. They may not always listen to a single investor, because even the big funds of today tend to hold only a relatively small number of shares in one corporation. But investors increasingly work together on these issues. So they can find each other in organizations like the Principles for Responsible Investment or other investor clubs, and then jointly push corporations to improve sustainability. The Climate 100 Plus initiative, for example, is a coalition of over 400 investors around the world. Um, and they push the largest corporate greenhouse gas emitters, so 100 firms plus a few extra, uh, to take more action to curb emissions and to increase their disclosure about these emissions. So they've been pressuring, they claim, uh, major international companies to go net zero by 2050 and set these clear targets. And I wanted to wrap up by, uh, by answering the third question. Is this enough? Is this way, this system of measuring and managing corporate sustainability enough? We probably need better rather than more metrics. So there's many things that could improve with the current system. Uh, metrics could focus on forward-looking data, for example, rather than being based on historic data. Imagine a world where CEOs face pressure because they haven't met their carbon emission uh, reduction targets rather than their quarterly earnings forecast. Um, and these sustainability or ESG ratings were long talked about as extra financial data, so separate from financial data. But nowadays, there are many, many initiatives going on to integrate the metrics, so to integrate the reporting of financial data and sustainability data. And one very exciting element that's going on is the use of artificial intelligence to analyze lots and lots of corporate sustainability data, including, for example, how companies contribute to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and then use that as a basis for investment decisions. Um, or automatically calculating climate emission uh, data and recommending action. 
So one of the main questions for future research will also be, how do we move from looking at individual companies and comparing their negative and positive impacts to a more uh, system level view? Um, we've heard a lot of talk today about the Earth system. I think it's fair to say that in the Faculty of Economics and Business, we struggle sometimes with this concept of systems. How does our view, uh, economics view of what's going on fit into the system view? Um, but it's fair to say that we need to change the market to incorporate sustainability, not just in shares and the way investment in shares is being run, but also in other investments. So how do we develop measures that are robust, can be used for comparison, measure roughly the same thing, but are also inclusive? So for example, include the stakeholders um, in the design of the, uh, of the criteria that are being used for measurement, including pension beneficiaries, right? How do we include pension beneficiaries in deciding what ABP is doing with our money. Um, and uh, coming back to the previous presentation, a lot of these ratings are at a global level and tend to uh, want to achieve scale, so compare a lot of companies. But how do we um, incorporate local sustainability initiative and then still be able to scale up uh, to a global level and to uh, help this comparison. Um, so in sum, I'm not sure how I'm doing, I think I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> we know that institutional investors, including your own pension fund, play a role in governing corporate sustainability and that measurement has an important role to play in existing corporate sustainability efforts. But we also know that we need to focus on uh, researching the effects and of their tools, their metrics, for transitioning to a more sustainable finance system. That stewardship, as investors see it, encompasses much more than just uh, stewarding um, the corporations that they invest in. <laughs>